going on, beautiful people? Having a great time. Welcome to Serendipity Podcast, Season 2, Episode 22. Want to talk to him about what we're going to discuss today? Oh, yes, sir. Please join us for an enlightening conversation about haters, dreams, and value. Yes, Lord. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Serendipity with Inky Johnson across all podcast platforms, including YouTube. Be sure to follow, like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Peace. Peace. What's going on, good people? Welcome to Season 2, Episode 22 of Serendipity Podcast. I'm Ink. I'm Oak. What's up, buddy? Man, I'm all good. I'm all good. We got we got uh we got sneaky man over here. <laughs> sneaky <laughs> man, up? man. What happened? What happened? Tell the folks, man. Tell man, the this folks, cat, man. this cat here, man. I spoke <laughs> in San Antonio, right? And I'm going in the Atlanta airport. I'm going to TSA pre-check, and I'm walking, and I look up, and I see, oh, looking lost. And we walk (laughs) and we walk dead slapping to each other, right? I'm like, man, what you doing in here? Oak like I'm headed to LA to meet Lorenz. Lorenz, right? So I'm like, no pressure, man. No pressure. I said, I asked you where you going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he, he cold blooded (laughs) with it. He cold blooded. (laughs) Ask me where I'm going. And that night, um, I speak, man, and this cat, they brought him from the back. And brought him on stage, man. It was a beautiful moment, man. And we embraced, we hugged. Oak got to share some words, his perspective about how he does what he does and and impacted my life. And it was dope, man. Like, what did that moment feel like to you, man? Just the uh, day. That, yeah, the whole day, the whole experience was, uh, it was surreal. You yeah. know, uh, in the sense that I never would have thought or I I never even imagined that this work would be seen or validated by anyone else. Mm. And that's probably why, you know, it, it's uh, it's authentic. It's it's ongoing. You know, yeah. it's, it's not looking for, this work is not looking for any type of uh, accolades. Okay. So for it to be, um, you know, acknowledged over all of these years, yeah, it was, it was surreal. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then with Fantasia being there, who yeah. was... Uh, you know, one the first, very first uh, student that I've mentored that Absolutely. made it even more special. You know, so it, it just brought it full circle, man. Uh, still speeches about it. Yeah. You know, most things I can kind of wrap my mind around and put some words to it, but um, I still haven't really figured out exactly how I feel and 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 what it meant, yeah. except for the fact of you know how I, I perceive that it meant for you guys, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the response that we got was definitely overwhelming. So, yeah, it was unbelievable, man. I, um, that night, Oh, when I, when I laid down, man, and you know, we had chopped it up, joked throughout the day after that. But, um, that night, man, I was like, man, my spirit needed that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even, I didn't even realize it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how something hit you in your spirit, and you like, man, my spirit needed that. You know what I'm saying? Like that laughter, yeah. that joy, you know what I'm saying? Like the serendipity <laughs> of the moment. My spirit needed it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It, yeah. uh, it did something for my spirit. Like it infused the level of joy and happiness in my spirit that I was like, man, I needed that moment, bro, today. So I'm, I'm forever grateful for you, man, taking time away just from your work as an educator, your yeah. family. I appreciate you doing that, man, from the bottom of my heart. Oh, my that pleasure. That meant a lot to me, man. My pleasure, Dr. Down. So we're going to start it off with a quote card. The first one reads, don't be pushed by your problems. Be led by your dreams. Don't, don't be, be pushed, pushed by, by your problems. problems. Be led, led by, by your, your dreams. dreams. Man, we, being, you know, the, the thing is, when I just read it, uh, mm-hmm. being pushed by your problems leads to depression, Hmm. leads to uh apathy hmm. leads to disconnect yeah. you know what i'm saying it's like we are we are always kind of chasing and trying to in problem solving mode mm-hmm. like it, it's it's almost like you you feel like you you're at negative in the negative and you're just trying to get up to zero yeah right your dreams your aspirations like literally you you're in the sky you're in, you're reaching towards heaven 
Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So you, if you're driven by your dreams, then those momentary setbacks, those disappointments, they won't, they won't hinder you. Mm. You know, you'll feel them. You'll be affected by it. Absolutely. But they won't get you to the point where you can't move. You won't get stuck in a rut. Right. Right. Because the truth to be told, if you're looking at your problems, like right now, if we would just take inventory of our quote unquote perceived problems, uh, we'd be like, man, how am I going to make it tomorrow? No doubt. You know, like for real, if you really were to just think about all of the perceived problems that you have, you may not, you may not make it, mm. you know. Especially yeah. there are some people who, because of their perspective, as you say, you know, perspective drive, drives performance, mm-hmm. your performance of how you live in day by day. If your perspective is in problem solving mode all the time, right, mm-hmm. then you, you're never going to really experience the joys of life and the, be able to complete the assignment of, of why you sit here. Absolutely. Right. So, yeah. oh, man, you being pushed, pushed by your problems. You're really gonna end up pushing your ass over the edge. <laughs> yeah, that's real. You know, that's real, real, man. Right? Because you don't have you don't have anything to hold on to. Mm. You don't have anything to look forward to. Yeah. You don't have anything to find uh, joy in. Mm. Right? Like your your dreams and aspirations. You know, it's just like when you have your kids. Yeah. Your dreams and aspirations. You know, is for them and for them to realize their their dreams and their aspirations. Like you you put that into them. Um, they but they come with problems. Absolutely. So you got to You you know it's easy. Like I like to to liken it to looking at your kids. Mm-hmm. Your kids come with problems. Meaning problems of they got to pay this. You got to pay that. They get in trouble or you got to solve this problem with them. This that and the third. Right. Whatever. Absolutely. But none of that trumps the joy of seeing them grow up. The Absolutely. joy of developing a relationship with them, the joy of them just becoming a man or becoming a woman, and and realizing their dreams and aspirations. Nothing trumps that. No, there are no, there's, there's not a problem mm. that is greater than the joy of watching a child grow up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. For yeah, me. that's that's dope, man. It it makes me think about when it says, "Don't be pushed by your problems; be led by your dreams." It makes me think about failure is not the opposite of success; it's a part of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of it. And the reason that I'm saying that is because when it says don't be pushed by your problems, problems are a part of the journey. Opposition are a part of the journey. Right. Adversity is a part of the journey. Like it's all a part of development and growth mm-hmm. as a person. And so when you got dreams and you got problems, I look at it as it's interconnected. Right. You got your dream. You got your goal. You got your aspirations. Problems are going to happen along the way. Conflict is going to happen along the way. Uncertainty is going to happen along the way. But the thing that's important is putting things in place to fight it, mm-hmm. right? Whether it be people, situation, routines, whatever the case may be, when you encounter problems, situation, circumstances that don't unfold the way you want it to, what do you have in place to counter the conflict, right? right? It's like when they tell you stay away from negative people, they got a problem for every solution, Mm-hmm. Right, like stay away from negative people. Every mm-hmm. time you come up with a solution, they got another problem. Nah, but that ain't gonna work. And you like, <laughs> but do you? Are you? Do you got any positivity, <laughs> optimism in you at all? Nah. You know what I'm saying? But dreaming is so important, man. And I feel like as you get older, it's like when a person says, "Have childlike faith," mm-hmm. right? Childlike hope. You know what I'm saying? As you get older, life punches you. Right. Life hits you with a blow. I remember when my injury happened, I was talking to my dad and I was like, man, I felt like I was in a boxing match and life just hit me. Like that KO punch, that one that took me out. And it took me a while to get up off the mat. And he was like, you know what's crazy, Ink? Life going to come back and do that to you again, again, bro. He was like at a different time and a different space and place. And I think when those blows happen, what happens oftentimes is we lose our ability to dream. Mm-hmm. We lose our ability to have hope. We lose our ability to have certain aspirations. And so for me, man, like every week I do things that help me dream, right? Whether it be riding in the car to certain places, whether it be getting on the Internet looking at certain things. Like I do things to help cultivate my faith, my belief, and my dreams because problems are going to happen. That's a part of life. It's inevitable, mm-hmm. right? right? Like you said, all of us can look at something right now and say, man, it's, this is a problem. This is a conflict. 
but people lose the ability to dream when they encounter conflict, adversity, and opposition. Keep oh. dreaming, man. And and so another aspect of what I thought about in terms of when you're saying you have those things in place, right? Yeah. Um, that's why community is so important. Yeah. That's why family is so important. That um, when things things just don't seem like they're going your way, you got people around you who can who can lift you up, but also who can see your blind spots, Absolutely. so that you can continue on your journey. You can continue on your assignment, what you're sent here to do, mm-hmm. right? So um, it just it's just so important, and to be intentional about that. I like what you're saying about just. If it's nothing but, uh, like for me, I, I love to just go walk on the football field, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I love football, but going to walk on the football field reminds me of my relationship with Coach Graham. Remind me of, you know, that time when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, and that's when I was dreaming. No doubt. That's when I was like, you know, the world is mine, and I can just go get it. Mm. But at 46, the world is still mine, and I can go get it. Yeah. Right? It's just... As you said, day by day, you you encounter situations and circumstances mm-hmm. that that are gonna punch you. Yep. So you to counteract those punches, you know, the, the Mayweather that shit, man. Yeah, you got to get back to those places that that brought you joy, that brought you hope. Absolutely. You know, and being intentional about it. Absolutely. People people pray, people meditate. You know, there are a whole lot of different things. We're not saying what to do. Mm-hmm. We're just saying find those those places of peace. Absolutely. So that you can dream. You know. Yeah. For sure. You know, Oak, I was um, I was thinking about something earlier this week, man. And as usual, we pitch and catch pretty heavy. And um, I wanted to know, man, just as a person, because we evolve so much throughout life, situations, circumstances, people. When you were 23 as an educator to where you are now in education, your role has changed several times, right? Mm-hmm. And now looking at how you view education and the lens you view it through and the man that you've become. When you were 23, if you can look back at the journey, are there certain things you would alter and do different? Or when you look back at the journey, do you say, man, that was necessary, it didn't feel good, but now I view that this way, like the growth process. Mm -hmm. When you look back at the 23-year-old Oak to now, how do you view that Uh, journey just as a... As an educator? Yeah, in in the realm of education... um, when I first started, it was, it was an urgency of now, yeah, and now being like literally right now, yeah. I still have the urgency of now, but now is six months. Now is a year. Mm-hmm. Now is five years, hmm. right? So my patience, yeah, uh, is is certainly different, right? Um, understanding and and probably like I I said earlier, second or third year. Um, when I was reading this book, uh, Sacred Hoops, and it was a saying that you can't speed up or slow down the flow of the river, right? Once I really let that sink in my spirit, that I no matter what I do to speed it up or slow it down, I can't. I can't mm-hmm. speed up or slow down time, right. right? What I can do is be intentional and be cognizant of how I, how I exist in that time mm-hmm. and what I put in in the time frame and the intervals that I'm given. So at 23, it was, I was, I felt like I was, you know, looking back on it, I felt like I was beating my head against the wall, hmm. right? And you know, had some successes, had a lot of non-successes, all part of the process, all part of the process. So I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't change anything. Right. Um, I I would just now at this point just look back on it and be able to uh, wrap my mind around it even better to articulate it yeah. in such a way that the next young Thundercat can um can can better their journey. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it I wouldn't do anything different. Right. right. But I definitely would uh as I'm doing now, just reflecting on it even more intensely mm-hmm. so that I can articulate my journey um even more. Right. So even what I was thinking about last night, it it brought me to the place of um even, and it's crazy that you asked this question, like my reflection. Mm-hmm. The power of being able to tell your own story, right? Because yeah. a lot of times the most well-intentioned or not well-intentioned people tell your story for you. Right. They're going to miss some things, right? right. Or it, it, it just gonna miss, you're going to be misrepresented. Mm-hmm. And that begins to shape you. And, and when you become misrepresented, you begin to believe some of that, the stuff <laughs> that they're saying. 
<laughs> and you're like, man, that didn't even happen. <laughs> Right. But again, it's their perspective. But you begin to believe it because you don't practice telling your own story. Right. Right. The power in telling your own story. And and see, for me, I've gotten to a place really where um, I don't believe that they're haters. Right. There are no haters in the world. Like people say, oh, he, hold up, man. Hold up. Me. Run that back. Run that back. You don't believe it's no haters. Nah, I know. All right, nobody talk about haters. this. Nobody, they're not hating. Mm-hmm. They just non believers. Mm -hmm. They're not hating on you. Yeah. They just can't see what you see. Yeah. They don't believe in what you believe. They don't believe in the vision that you see. Mm -hmm. They don't believe what the vision that God gave you. Yeah. They don't believe in the walk that you're walking. They're not hating on you. They yeah. just can't see it. They can't see it. They're non-visionaries. Yeah. They're non-seers. Yeah. They're not haters. Yeah. It's not even their fault. Mm. It's not even, you know what I'm saying? Even if they're trying to hate. Yeah. You can't hate. How you hate on God's assignment? Mm. How Talk can you hate it. on what God gave you Talk about it. to do? Right? Talk about it. Oh, yeah. ain't, he was thinking all daddy yeah. doing this, that, and other. He driving such and such, he living such and such, yeah. and doing all, you know, whatever. And like he don't know nobody. Yeah. Right? No, they just don't see. Mm. They don't see. They wasn't there. The old folk, man, my, back home in Flint River Baptist Church, they just sang this song. You don't know you wasn't there. Mm. You don't know what the Lord told me. You don't know what the Lord told me. Right? When you in that hospital, yeah. Red, when you in that room, mm hmm. I don't know. Nobody. Your pops don't know. Mom don't know yeah. what God told you. That's so. Right? So yeah. if anybody feel like, or if you you think that they're hating on the assignment, they went there. So yeah. they don't know. They just, they just non-believers. Mm. They can't hate because you, yeah. you can't hate on what you don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, right? sir. So, and what that does, it frees you up. You don't Freeze. now. You don't have the energy that you you battling. Oh man, you don't believe in me. You don't believe in my vision. You don't believe in what I'm saying. You don't believe in what I'm trying to do. You don't believe in my dream. Yes, sir. Nah, it ain't folks' responsibility to believe in your dream. No doubt, it's real. Cause your dream, your aspiration, that's yours. Facts, right? That that's 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 unique to you. Yes, sir. Now the folks who are gonna ride with you, their job is to believe in you. Yeah. Not your dream. Yeah. You yeah. got to go out and walk that dream. You got to go out. And plow that road right there. You got to walk yeah. behind that mule. Yes, sir. They just got to be the ones that gonna believe. I mean, you know, the ones that gonna believe in you. Mm -hmm. That's it. So the ones yeah. that don't believe in you, they're just non-believers. They're not haters. <laughs> non-believers, right? Ain't no haters. Huh? No, nah, you know, ain't no haters. No haters. And uh, that that road of growth, man, is so interesting. Oh, you know, like. I believe life reveals to you versions of yourself through situations, circumstances, and people. And so what I'm speaking to is not the totality of the person that a person may be, mm -hmm. right? Life can't reveal that. Like you said, that's you, right? Right. But I think when situations happen and you see something similar to what you may have done, said, or faced or encountered, it makes you reflect upon your actions in terms of growth. And so I'm always interested in terms of when a person comes into a situation, been doing it for a while, then they get to a certain point to say, hey, man, how do you view this different now that you've been doing it for a mm -hmm. while? You've been doing it for 20 years or something, right? And say to a person, hey, man, like year one versus year 20, how do you view it differently, right? Cat been coaching for a while. All right, year one versus year 40, how do you view it different? entrepreneur, year one versus year whatever, right? Matt, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. right? And so even as a father, like the other day a situation happened and I had been on myself about patience, time, response, right? How I respond to a situation, how I teach my children through my response to situations and how I handle it, right? When to speak, when not to speak, mm -hmm. right? And um, I read a quote, man. It was by my guy, Tony Gaskins. And he says something to the extent of stop making our children feel like they're only of value based upon their sports performance or if they win an award. Right. Make them feel like they're valued and they're loved because of their existence. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes based upon a person's performance. Right. It's this it's this type of love that's predicated upon. If you do well, mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. you. Right. You give me what I want. I love you. Right. 
in terms of growth and the person that I'm trying to become, like, I love you regardless. But trying to grow through situations and circumstances and teach growth to people through situations and circumstances, that's a totally different ball game. Mm-hmm. When it comes to leadership, when it comes to leading the ship, when it comes to doing things a certain way and not allowing your actions to betray your words. And so I saw a guy do something the other day, and I ain't, I ain't judging him. I saw the situation unfold, and I heard him say something. And I thought to myself, like, damn, have I ever said that to my youngin? Have I ever said that? And I saw the reaction. Mm-hmm. Of the child? Of the child. Okay, okay. Right? And I wasn't judging my man because I'm like, Shit, I probably done came off rough and rugged that way too because I know how I get down, right? And my wife said something because I always talk to Allison about response because she worked with kids, educator. She do it, elementary, salute. I'm like, how, um, how should I approach things just with younger people, right, in terms of trying to get the best out of them? She said, um, I, don't, I don't think people realize sometimes, but... Um, positive reinforcement works. <laughs> All the time. It works. Every time. Right? Yeah. And oftentimes we're in an environment to where it's either a threat or it's either condemning or mm-hmm. it's either critiquing or it's either pointing out negativity. Yep. And I said, man, sometimes you can have something so good that you never allow it to get the great because you're so busy condemning it when it's good. Mm-hmm. You're so busy critiquing it when it's good. Now it's a process to that but you never allow it to get to great because you're blocking it, right? right? right. And so when I always think about the process of growth, I'm always interested to see one's thought process, one's development, and the lens that they see life through. The quote says it, the man that views the world at 40 the same way he viewed it at 20 has wasted 20 years of his life, right? It's, it's, um, to me, you go into any situation, it's just a, a, a philosophy that, a personal philosophy that a person has, which is, um, it's a growth mindset, mm-hmm. it's an evolution mindset, it's a, I'm trying to be better than I was yesterday, but not as good as I'm going to be tomorrow. Right. Right? That's just your mindset. Sure. Um, or, it's, I'm I'm just trying to be good today. Mm. Um, which means, you'll get too good. Yeah. But we won't ever get to great. We won't maximize a situation, mm-hmm. right? Because, um, because of our fears, because of re- critiquing ourselves or the critique that we get from others. Right. When when you said about um, positive reinforcement works, what happens is what always works. I'm not telling you what I know. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not telling you what I feel. I'm telling you what is. Mm. And what is always works is balance. Balance, yes, sir. Because that's that's the law of the universe. Yeah. Right? I talk about reciprocity all the time. All reciprocity is, is the universe balancing itself out. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So whatever you give, you get. Yeah. Whatever you get, you give. Absolutely. So the notion of, and whatever balance is. Balance, for me, may be 80% positive, 20% negative. Right. Like, you only have to fuss at me one time. Yeah. If you're going to you know, uh, support and compliment and, and and cheer me on nine of those times. Right. Because what I'm going to look to do is I'm not going to look to disappoint you. Mm-hmm. Right. My Auntie Gladys, I tell, you know, I tell anybody, right, one of the people who, would cr- if she ever raised her voice at me in anger, it would crush me like I'm a two-year-old child, man. Mm. Because the way in which she's always talked to me and dealt with me, even when I was less than my best, was in a positive, reinforcing, sweet, kind way. Mm. So I'm going to go out of my way every single time not to disappoint her. Mm. Right? That's good. Now, there are other people who I receive their love through uh, fussing or yeah. uh, not necessarily the most positive words. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there there were some people. Like my mom, yeah, you know, back in the day when I was growing up, she yeah. she used to give me the business, oh, by no question. No she question. used to give me the business, but I understood that it was, that was her way of loving me. Absolutely, right. Absolutely. So sometimes I would just do some things just for her to fuss. Yeah, because that was oh, mom loves oh, me. Yeah, 
right? If I did something, if I left my clothes in the floor or didn't pick them up or something, she came home and didn't fuss, I'm like, Mom, what's wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's wrong? You sick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would come home sometimes, man, all my clothes would be out in the front yard. Mm. Cause I didn't, I didn't pick them up and put them in, the, you know, the wash machine or some shit. Man, my always race, man. Yeah, yeah man. No doubt. I, no doubt. You know, but again, that that interaction pushed me, made me better. Mm-hmm. But I understood that was her way of loving me. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, the balance, though, it, again, is the balance. Absolutely. Every now and again, mom say, "Babe, I'm proud of you." Yeah. Rock my world, made me feel like. You know, a big head, hundred dollar bill. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No so, doubt. so balance with mom, doubt. the balance was I may get twenty percent, twenty or two times out of ten. Baby, I'm proud of you. The other eight, come on now, let's go. What you doing? Watch them dishes. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying. Make sure your room clean. Absolutely. That's balance. It's balance. Balance is not fifty fifty. Yeah. Every single time, nah. Balance. You you figure out balance from moment to moment with people to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. I like that, man. I got sure. one for you, Oak. It says, um. Peace makes you strong. Hate reveals emptiness. Kindness feeds your happiness. Anger reveals your fear. Let's and bro- love makes you free. Let's break that down. Man. Peace makes you strong. Peace and strength. Hate reveals your emptiness. Mm-hmm. Kindness feeds your happiness. Anger reveals your fear. And love makes you free. Golly. I don't know if we got enough time, ain't man. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to condense condense it, right? Peace makes you strong, dog. Um, sheesh. And 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 a lot of times, like in, in listening to that, right? We think you have to be strong to have peace, mm. right? We talk about oh, uh, you know, the nonviolence of Dr. King, this, that, and the third, right? Um, but there's a there's a level of peace that one has to get to within themselves. Absolutely. Right. That's where your prayer, your meditation, your stillness comes mm-hmm. into play. Right. And as the more you become at peace, then that's when you get your strength. Yeah. Right. The more when you when you become peaceful in and we call it like let's say shooting baskets. Somebody playing the game, they get in the zone. Right. Mm-hmm. John Morant other night in the zone. Yeah, zone. Right. Um, there was a level of peace. There's a level of peace that you get to. There's a level. Everything just stops. It slows down. Right. And then that's when you get the ultimate performance. Mm-hmm. That's when you get the ultimate outcome, if you will. That's where your strength comes from. Where your strength comes from. You have to fight for the peace first. That's why I always I always tell people. And if we look at this, right? I don't, I was writing them down. You got peace, strength, you got uh what was the second? Something that hate empty. reveals emptiness. Hate, yep. kindness, happiness. Right. Hate, kindness, and anger, fear, right. And love makes you free. Anger. So if we start with peace mm-hmm. and go through it like a maze, right? Peace, yeah. strength, hate, empty, kind, happiness, anger, fear, love, free. free. Yep. I want peace so I can be free. Mm. <laughs> and I'm going to go through all of those stages. Yeah. Right? So you get the peace. Now you got a little strength. Now you got to fight off hate because if you don't, then you're going to be empty. Empty. Yeah. Right, but you invite kindness. Mm. It's like this: I'm going to be kind regardless of how I feel. Yeah, because then, as a result of me being kind, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be happy. Bro. Be happy, no doubt. I'm not no gonna doubt. be if you if you're if you flip it around, which is I'm happy, so now I'm kind. Mm-hmm. Which means then, when I'm upset, yeah, when I'm not happy, then I'm an asshole. Right? Nah. Right. <laughs> right. Understanding that the peace, the kindness, and the love are the principles, mm-hmm. right? And as a result of those, you get the strength yeah. because hate is a principle too. Yes, sir. It's just one that I don't choose to choose to invest in, right? Anger is mm-hmm. a principle. Like you have, like you were saying, you people walk around and they're always negative. You got people walk around, they angry all the time about oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> just mad. Just wake up <laughs> mad. mad. Hey, I'm too mad. Hot. Turn the room upside <laughs> down. I'm and they, you. but they're fed off of that though. Yeah, they it makes them feel it, no some kind of yeah, peace, if you will, yeah. to be to be angry. <laughs> he said make them feel peace, huh? Like you, like yeah. like for us, like to be mad, like you choose, you choose yeah. not to be mad because that's not a cool feeling for no you. No doubt, I don't it like does it nothing at all. for you. I don't like it at all, bro. right? And and for me, being angry, man, if I get mad, I'm gonna sleep. 
Yeah. I don't even want to deal with myself. Yeah. Cause I just I don't like being angry. Yeah. Either. Right. But the thing is, you 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 fight for your peace, right? Yeah. So that you can ultimately be, become free. Yeah. That's why I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And these are things that we choose to do. We choose peace. Mm-hmm. We choose hate. Yeah. We choose kindness. We choose anger. And we choose love. Yeah. You choose, choose to do those things. Absolutely. And as a result of those choices, then you have strength. Yeah. Then you have empty. Yeah. I mean, empty emptiness, right? Yeah. Or then you have happiness. Then that results. That anger results into a fear. Mm. The love result results into a freedom. Right, man. So, peace. so that's 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 the power of it. That's the autonomy that we have. I love it. And I love peace, it. Peace, man. Yeah, it's like this cat. He was asking me, like, man, like, how do you, how do you view success? Like, what's success? And I was like, peace and happiness, mm-hmm. right? Because if you acquire success or whatever you refer to be success, and you're not happy or you don't have peace about it, is it really success? I think peace is the ultimate. Like, that's the ultimate freedom. That's the ultimate thing that I'm after every single day. Do I acquire it or do I capture it sometimes? Sometimes I feel like I capture it, right? I don't feel like I've acquired it yet, mm-hmm. like to where I just got it. Like, nah, stuff yeah. disrupt my peace all the time. And so I think peace is something that once you get peace, man, hold on to that. Like, that's like, like what's that, Infinity Stones when my man was in the uh, the little, what's that, what's that verse with all them characters? When you got Iron Man, you uh, got uh, uh, Tony Stark, all them cats. What's that? What's the Avenger. verse called? The Avengers, Avengers. right? And my man would get them stones. I look at in life, the stone, the ultimate stone is peace, peace. right? If I acquire peace, I'm good, man. Yeah. Like all the other stuff, like it's cool, but I'm after peace. Like the peace that's unmovable, unshakable to where when I acquire it, man, I'm all good. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So that's and, the ultimate. I mean, yeah. That, in fact, one of the statements I always say, man, I just want to sit on the porch and watch the grass grow. Yeah. That's that's what peace is to me. Sure enough. You know what I'm saying? When I can be in a place where the regardless of everything that's going on, my focus, my mind is just, man, I'm just I'm I'm here. Yeah. I'm here in such tune with the universe, in such tune with nature that I can literally see that grass growing a milliliter, mm. a min- millimeter, whatever, right? Yeah. You know, just just that level of peace that um that we're all trying to aspire to, right? Yeah. But for this not to be like a pie in the sky, like, oh, y'all can't just talking. Like, yeah. how does a person get to their peace? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? How do you, because I think peace is something you create, mm-hmm. right? One of the things is is being mindful of your perspectives. Important. Like, if your perspective doesn't bring you a level of peace, then you might need to change it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Meaning, think about those things that you have ultimate control over. I have control over my perspective. Now there are things that that uh, affect it, mm-hmm. meaning there are situations, there there are things that happen today that affect my perspective. Yet, because I'm I'm cognizant of my perspective, and does my perspective feed me, mm. right, it feed? or does it defeat me? Mm. Yeah. If my perspective is defeating me, then I I can't ever get to peace. I can never yeah. get it. Got to change it, right? I have to change my perspective. Yeah. So it's like you, I can't change my. If if a person in a situation where you can't change your job, mm-hmm. right? Let's say you're not able to change your job, then you got to change your perspective on it. Yeah. If you're not able to change your life situation, mm-hmm. then you got to change your perspective on it. Yeah. Because peace is there for it to take in. It's yours. It's your right. Yeah. Right. There's not a place that you have to get to. There's not something you have to accomplish to have the peace. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really just getting and having an understanding of, of what is your thoughts. Are your thoughts feeding you or are your thoughts defeating you? Yeah. You know, cats ask me all the time because, you know, they come out with different technology every year. Mm-hmm. Um, and cats are always asking me stuff about my arm. Like, Ink, you want to go here? You want to try this new piece of technology to see will it do this? Or do you want to do this and put this on your arm or your hand? And I'd be like, nah, I'm cool. And they'd be looking like, you what? I'm like, I'm cool. I got peace mm-hmm. with my situation, partly because I've seen how God has used it, right, to impact people, to add value to people, to add value to situations. But most importantly, it's given me a level of peace that no matter which way the wind blows, 
the creator has a plan for my life. Right. And so I'm good with it, man. And so we done pontificated, man. <laughs> we done pontificated. Yes, sir. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I got a word, man, that um that I want to take us out with. Courtesy of T. What's up? Value. Value. A figment of your imagination. Mm. Talk about Value it. Value is a figment of one's imagination. Because, you know, just like like we talk about a dollar, the value of a dollar. Right. Right? Ten years ago was something, ten years from now gonna be something else. Mm -hmm. You know, you could buy a hot dog or hamburger or whatever for 25 cents. Now it costs $4. I went mm. to Five Guys yesterday. It was six, seven dollars. I thought I was going to go in there and get three hot dogs yeah. for about eight dollars and fifty cents. Sure enough. Man, because I ain't bought a hot dog so long, you know, outside of being at the ball game or something. And it was like, dang, for real? <laughs> One hot dog, eight dollars? Ketchup, mustard, and, yeah. and, some, uh, and some onions? Yeah, right? man. So, so value is... And the reason I say a figment of your imagination is whatever you want, mm. whatever you can imagine the value is. Yeah. Right? We were just having a conversation last night just to drop something on you, right? Mm -hmm. Where I'm from in, in, the, in the rural south, uh, my grandma, granddad, them, right, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't buy Coca-Cola. They mm. couldn't go to the store and buy Coca-Cola. They, they had a dollar. If they had 50 cents, two quarters, mm. how much of it cost? Their two quarters... And somebody that didn't look like them had two quarters. Yeah. Them two quarters that somebody that didn't look like them had more value than the two quarters that my grandmama had. Mm. Because that those two quarters that they had could buy the Coca-Cola. Wow. So the two quarters that she had could only buy an RC Cola. Mm. Maybe a Pepsi. Maybe. Maybe. But black folks couldn't buy a Coca-Cola. Wow. Right? So but we still got 50 cents. The, the value's still the same. The mm. monetary value is the same. Yeah. But what I decide to put on, what do I value? Like we were just talking. I value my peace. Yeah. More so than I value whatever dollars I have in my pocket. Mm. I'm in, I mean, I got to go figure out how I'm going to pay for something right now with my son. Yeah. I figured out. But I, I don't value that more than uh, the peace and the relationship that I have with my son. No doubt. You see what I'm saying? No doubt. So... Value, again, like I said, I think it's just a figment of our imagination. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's not real. I'm just saying it's in your mind. Yeah. You get the opportunity to create and whatever is of value to you and your surrounding and your community, right? Whatever so. we say we value, mm -hmm. which means then I value being unapologetically of African descent. Right. Just like a person from Irish descent, a person from European descent. Value, that, that is of value. Mm-hmm. Right? Because right. you've decided. You've decided. That that's something that you value. You've decided that's that's what's important to you. Yeah. Right? Your value is a figment of your imagination. Use your imagination. Mm. So mm. that your value of your imagination of yourself increases every day. Yes, sir. That's value. Yes, sir. Your value will never be predicated upon anything external. Yep. No yep. person, no, no situation, no circumstance. Your value will always be predicated upon what you possess internally. Don't never allow your value to be predicated upon something external. That's our time. And we out. Peace. Peace.